Now as we continue our look into the sample parameters, again we're starting with this live set in your project folder called warping set. And again we're going to double click on this clip that says quarter on it and that'll open up the clip display down here if it's not visible for you now. Also remember we've got these hide reveal buttons down here and you want to make sure that the picture of the waveform is the only one that's clicked on and made yellow. And that gives us our sample parameters. Now we're going to pick up where we left off now by looking at the transpose, the detune, and the volume offset parameter here. Now transposing is marked in steps. A single step is from one key on the keyboard to the very next one. Or if you're used to thinking in terms of guitar or bass, that's up or down one fret at a time. So if I pull my transpose down one, then that's going to make this play one step lower. Now put this back up. I'm going to use something that has a pitch to it. Let's go to this pad sound, simply click on it, and its waveform becomes visible. Now again, I'm going to turn off the fade, and I'm going to enable high Q so we get the best sound quality. And let's play this back and listen to the original. I'm simply clicking here. And stopping with the space bar. This is a little bit soft, so let's jump over and deal with the volume offset here. And notice that we can increase or decrease the preset volume of the waveform. And one of the great things about Ableton Live is as we do this, we can see the waveform image changing. And this lets us know if we go too loud and we get into distortion, I can simply pull it back until we have no more waveform points going off the top or off the bottom. Let's listen again now. Again, clicking here. And much more audible, and we can tell more exactly what's going on. Now again, this is great because we can see immediately as we change this volume offset, we can see the waveform change and hear the difference immediately. Back over to transpose. Again, we're moving in steps. Let's pull it down two steps and play again. And space bar to stop. Let's go down seven steps. Space bar to start. The audio quality is still very good. Again, I've got high Q enabled so we can get the best quality out of this. Let's go up five steps and listen again. Now it's a little bit strange, but bear in mind that whenever you listen to some of these edits you're making over here, to always hear it in context, how noticeable is that if we have another file going along with it? Let's launch one and see. Now the little artifacts that are in there are much less noticeable. I'm coming over here and clicking on my stop clips button in the middle right and coming back down to our parameters. Now, so that's our transpose. We can move things up or down. I'm going to press my delete key, and that sets to put everything back at a default value. And this is back at zero transpose, or zero steps. Now, down below, we have the synths. Now, a synth is a tiny, tiny measurement of changing the key. And again, we're talking about moving the pitch of this whole waveform here. This allows us to get in between the cracks, so to speak, between the keys of your keyboard or the frets on your guitar. This can be very useful if the tuning of this wave doesn't quite match your song by a little bit. Let's listen now. Here it is original. I'll click here. Now there are 100 cents between each key. So if I come down about 50, that'll be about half a key. And we'll listen. Now, that certainly feels weird because we've been listening to it quite a bit in the original key. But if it were out of key, that's so helpful, it's amazing. So I'm typing 0 and Enter to put this back at the beginning or original settings and playing. And it even takes my ear a while to readjust to this correct setting, so to speak. 
So now as we deal with these parameters, realize that their main job is to help this waveform fit in with our existing audio material. We can transpose it so that it fits the key of the song that we're in now and not the key that was originally recorded in. We can set the detune to get it correctly on pitch in fine little increments. And we can also adjust the volume so that this clip will play more evenly within the mix. This can be particularly true like in track one. We have several drum clips and if one were unusually louder than the others we could simply use the volume offset to even that out. Okay, I'm going to stop here after looking at these three parameters and move on next to looking at these in the warp column.